Hey guys, it's Illuminostic. Today, I'm gonna go out into the uh, Ecuadorian backcountry and look for some different mushrooms, particularly Psilocybe cubensis, the golden teacher, and also Penelis cyanesin, which is one of the world's most powerful <coughs> psilocybin mushrooms. And then we're also going to look for different gourmet edibles. I've heard that there are chanterelles up there, there's even people saying that there are psilocybe cyanessions. Yeah, we're going to head up into these mountains over here. Little brown mushrooms or LBMs. I don't know exactly what this particular strain is, but I can tell you that it does not contain psilocybin, or at least it is not known to me to contain psilocybin. And this is kind of what I was talking about when I mentioned the lookalikes. There's definitely a few coprophilic mushrooms that grow in subtropical areas. And you do have to watch out because they're quite common and somewhat similar. Over here, you guys, you can see the Valley of Longevity. It's called this because people were known to live an extraordinarily long time, upwards of 100 years. With some regularity, some people said it was something in the water. Others said it was the air, which has been tested to be about as clean as air can get. So here is our first encouraging sign of the day. Um, there's some slightly deteriorated Penelis cyanessions here. And I'm not sure what this guy is, but that sure is strange. Some sort of coral horn. Um, so interesting stuff and some promising signs. Some bizarre star-shaped grass wildflowers. Here is what appears to be a very tiny wild passion flower. So here is another one of the potential lookalikes. You can see it has gray gills, no purple veil. And it's much lighter in color, and it's also growing on horse dung. This massive Ecuadorian wasp just emerged from its hole over here and there's another okay okay dude apparently that was their nest so uh i'm gonna go ahead and fuck off this is a pretty cool mushroom it is the egg of a stink horn at least we call them in the united states I'll look around and see if I can find a mature one, but uh, this little egg, basically it has that skin, and then inside there's this gelatinous mass with a star shape on top. These are actually edible. I've never eaten them before, but I think today I'm going to give them a shot and see what else we can find. Finally, after an entire day of fruitless searching, here we have some Ecuadorian psilocybe cubensis. You'll notice the veil is purple, attached to the stem, dark gills that have purple spores. Usually the stem will bruise blue, not so much the cap, maybe, but these are perfectly prime. We want them right after the veil breaks, so these are maybe a little too old. There you can see some of the spore on that one. And they are incredibly abundant here in Ecuador. Pretty much anywhere that is tropical to subtropical nice little find if you're out here in the patties looking for mushrooms these tall clumps of grass oftentimes hide manure and a lot of times the mushrooms will be found right up against the grass kind of difficult to see a lot of times they're just growing right out in the middle of the field in the sun so today is already getting off to a little bit better of a start than yesterday Definitely psilocybin cubensis this year. Looks like it's been eaten a little bit, but you can see the purple stripe that you're looking for, a golden cap, and it'll have a purple spore print. And as you can see, the habitat is grass and cow dung. And then there's some peaks of the Andes over there. I was walking along through the grass here and I noticed a very tiny mushroom with a blue stem and a wavy cap. The other day, 
a guy told me that there are uh, psilocybe cyanescens here. My understanding is that they need cold to fruit and I mean there are a lot of eucalyptus and they grow sometimes in conjunction with those. But it got me thinking about something and this is uh, this is something that's been observed with several different psychotropic plants and it's this co-evolutionary sort of symbiotic relationship that they develop with people. Uh, psilocybe cubensis would not be nearly as common if it wasn't for commercial cattle and even like the local beef cattle fields. If we weren't using these, producing so many of these animals and they weren't producing so much manure, there would not be a fraction of the number of psilocybe cubensis there are. And also the cyanescin that I was mentioning is extremely rare in the wild. It only tends to occur in lawns and places, parks and places where people have disturbed the natural environment. And aside from mushrooms, there are, uh, you know, Datura that tends to only grow in places that have been disturbed by men, at least Datura stramonium in, in, in the United States. So it's just an interesting thought that these amazing plants that are capable of uh, such tremendous catalyzation of consciousness and treatment of so many psychiatric and emotional disorders from autism to depression to PTSD. Uh, it's like the medicine is almost following us around. It's creeping up out of nature and saying, hey, you know, this is, I'm what you need to fix your, your society and your culture. And you are what I need to prolificate my kind. A few more pretty nice pinellas. I don't know if you guys can see uh, the grass is actually stained black by the, uh, the spores. Here's something worth noting. Uh, these actually are cubensis, but they were found growing completely submerged in this tall grass. And so they didn't get the characteristic yellow color. So here are a couple of little tiny babies. I just wanted to uh, show you guys how quickly they grow. I'm gonna come back this evening and oh, just accidentally knocked this little guy loose. So I guess we're gonna have to take him. Okay, so here we are the next morning. You can see they've gotten considerably bigger, but the still cap has not started to open. But then I discovered a, a slightly different strain right next to it. This mushroom wasn't even there yesterday and it actually is ready. You can see where the veil is starting to break. That's what I was mentioning earlier that is the indication that the mushroom is at its perfect prime peak potency. So here we are a few hours later. And as you can see, the cap still haven't opened. And interestingly, there's another mushroom, the lighter cap. I've actually picked several of these that came up in a single day. I don't know why this one is going so slowly. The other unusual thing is that the cubensis are not fruiting anywhere here right now. It's very dry. So I think perhaps just the unusual conditions are contributing to very slow growth. We'll come back and check this evening. Looks like Finally, and this is the larger one actually, I had to pick it last night. Um, you can see the blue bruising and you can see how much it bruised, which is an indication of potency because the mushroom was picked at its peak. I've also always thought it was interesting that uh, the veil, in the occult we talk about piercing the veil and you can see where this one's open just a little bit. It's this sort of thin, mushy layer. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Support us on Patreon. Keep your eyes out for the psychedelic masterclass coming soon.